Yeah, welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. Hope you've had yourself a lovely day. Now settle in for an hour of chat, opinions, reviews and more on some of the big events of the day. And they don't get much bigger than the World Government Summit. Yeah, you might have been held up in the traffic. Yeah, there's been a few issues with the weather in the early part of the summit. But you know what? Uh, we have had some big hitters in town and some big decisions have been made. We'll have more analysis on that over the course of the next few minutes and more. So keep it locked here on DXP today. Let's have a little look up, see what's coming up tonight. We are down to the last and final day of the World Government Summit, wrapping up what has been a very busy three days of international dialogue. Plus, big discussion about the mega urban projects with a number of experts, including the CEO of UAB. And we're exploring the themes of urbanization and future economies with the experts as part of our World Government Summit theme tonight. So guys, it's day number three. Today is all about urbanization. And I heard like the guest of honor for today is India. So have you been down to the World Government Summit? Have you had any chance to go there? Last year, I spent quite a bit of time there, to be honest. And um, this year, I have not yet made up. But hey, we're talking about it, so does that count? I'm very excited to see uh, Shah Rukh Khan in town. I'm sure that <laughs> that sparked a lot of interest to in people who generally wouldn't make their way down there yeah. um, last year. Tom's like, are you seriously talking about the celebrity? Every We're changing <laughs> the world here, Dina, and you're talking about the celebrities. But you know, it's Shah Rukh Khan, and he's in town. Yeah, but it's interesting you say that. I mean, because, I, you know, there is an argument out there that the modern day celebrities, the celebrities of today are the big investors. They are the big investors into big ideas, the big investors into the ideas of tomorrow, the tech, uh, the tech investors that, uh, that, have, that have sort of helped to revolutionize the world, etc. If they walk into a room, then the room is quiet. You know, they've become the sort of celebrities, the big names of today. And to have a number of them in town, Sam Altman, the uh, founder of uh, ChatGPT, in yeah. town as part of those discussions. So that's what I'm loving about the World Government Summit. Yes, governments by name, but it looks at disciplines and looks at it from such a wide perspective as well. And I think that's what it's done well over the last three days, bringing together decision makers, not just from the government yes. sector, but from across the board. Yes. 110 <laughs> sessions. What are you most interested in? I've, uh, I mean, I was down there for the whole day yesterday. Uh, obviously, uh, we've just concluded on day three today. Uh, it's just been, it's been fascinating from the off, you know, and even the weather on day one could not dampen the enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, the weather was amazing. Honestly, everyone was talking about it. It was so cold <laughs> and nice. Uh, but since we're talking about the World Government Summit and today is all about urbanization and like we said, the future economies, who better to have with us in the studio than our guest co-host? Let's find out who it is. Hello, my name is Sonia Weymuller. I'm co-founder and general partner at VentureSouk, and I am thrilled to be with you all tonight. Sonia will join us in just a little bit, but before that, our team has been on the field at WGS, catching up at the day three of the World Government Summit. Let's check it out. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us. Now, the World Government Summit 2024 is hosting a number of key discussions, one such that you will be speaking on soon about how AI is impacting public policy and AI maturity in government. How do you expect these sessions, to, what are the key takeaways that you expect governments to take away from these sessions? Yes, first of all, great to see you and thanks for having me. Um, we have a very dear relationship with the, with, the, with the summit and when I say we I refer to the Dubai Future Foundation because the formation of the foundation actually happened eight years ago here in the summit where His Highness walked through a modest uh, display of something called the Museum of the Future which was a small display. He walked in and he realized the value of institutionalizing future foresight and fast forward eight years, that modest uh, scaffolding is now one of the most iconic buildings and you have a foundation that actually works on creating a better future for everyone through the foresight and the initiatives that we launch. But going back to your question, um, for us the conversations that happen in this summit are fuel for us. They are uh, thought leadership, they are ideas, they are challenges, they are opportunities that we actually download and listen to. And that's why you'd probably see more than 100 employees from DFF sitting in different sessions and conversations to ensure we really extract the value of those conversations, those meaningful, whether concerns or opportunities, so we can draw a better future for humanity. So the uh, summit has proven 
through the years that it is one of the, if not the most important convening in the world. More than uh, 25 leaders from all over the world, more than 300 ministers, more than 4,000 people are here and executives from all over the world. So our mission is to understand those opportunities and challenges more, including AI, including how to work with it, whether government and private sector, including sustainability. Today we heard an amazing conversation on aviation and, and uh, uh, sustainable fuel versus hydrogen and, and, and carbon and how we can do, when are we going to actually reach that. So that's also an extremely important topic. Um, it helps us a lot really to come up with initiatives that will be in the betterment of humanity. So we're very much excited about it. Incredible. And the Dubai Future Foundation is a testament to actioning some of these initiatives. Um, how quickly do they take to, to take from dialogue to being actioned right here in Dubai? And what can citizens and residents expect? So I think this is, uh, thankfully, and credit to our leaders, is the secret sauce of Dubai and the UAE. It's the agility and the speed. And it's not the size of the country, it's how hungry you are and how ambitious you are. And, and we are modest in size but we're definitely not modest in our ambitious ambitions and, and where we want to achieve and what we want to achieve. So I think, and the trust in leadership and the acceptance of testing new ideas and also the acceptance of uh, making risk mitigated failures and understanding those because they're not failures, they're actually learning curves. And this mindset is what uh, enabled such a young nation um, to reach where it did at the moment. And we're, we're, we're honored to be part of this uh, journey. And uh, we believe uh, Dubai Future Foundation can also contribute more and more towards the future. Amazing. And you mentioned the mindset. How important is mindset when it comes to the youth and World Government Summit and what this means for them? It's imperative. Without the mindset, uh, no matter how much money you pump into a project, and no, no, much, no matter how much great ideas you bring in, if you don't have the right mindset that actually will accept and embrace the innovation, then that money won't go anywhere and the project will not. Imagine bringing a last mile delivery uh, drone uh, idea and then policies do not align because of a mindset issue. What, can, what use is that uh, drawn for you, right? Same thing if you apply blockchain and crypto and for transactions. If you don't have a, a test bed to test those ideas and validate them, and you simply block them, no matter how many billions of dollars you invest in them, they won't be any use to you. So you need that mindset from the youth all the way to the ultimate leaders. And we know we have them through the ultimate leaders. We need to ensure that the youth continue that mindset. Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you on DXB today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, as you can see, plenty of activity down at the Summit Space. Uh, I'm bringing to, of course, to a conclusion uh, this year's World Government Summit 2024. Uh, however, uh, the conversation doesn't stop there. In fact, it continues right here on DXB today. And our guest co-host today, as you saw a little earlier on, uh, co-founder uh, on a mission to harness sustainability among startups worldwide, focused on early stage tech ventures. She's creating long-term impact through her company. Uh, Venture Souk uh, is, of course, the name of the company. The co-founder and general partner is Sonia Vailamula, who joins us live on the sofa. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for, for having me, all of you. Listen, I know that this has been something that you've been invested in so heavily, personally, and through, and through the company. You set that company up to address the, the, the topic that we're addressing this evening. These get-togethers, COP28, you know, we look back at COP28 not that long ago, the decisions that came out of that, the conversations that were had during that World Government Summit over mm. the course of the last three days as well. Are they, are they adding to the conversation? Are we starting to see results or is there just a lot of talk? Well, I think that's a very good question. I think, yes, with COP recently and now with WGS, ultimately this is a space for dialogue whether it be the public sector in this case, the private sector or the nonprofit sector, it's how do we get all these people in the same room and get them to actually converse about specific topics or specific themes. Mm -hmm. What was great about COP, which we saw recently, was all the side events that were happening. So it wasn't just about what was happening at Expo, yeah. it was all, I mean, the flurry of side events that were taking place. I think it was also very inclusive of the private sector, uh, which was also very new. Um, and then we had a health day at COP specifically. So similar themes are being weaved into World Government Summit as well. No doubt, again, you know, this is what, it's been 11 years that, that Dubai has been playing host to WGS. Um, 
it's always been kind of government focused. But as you said earlier, we're seeing the likes of Sam Altman, so some key robust technology players coming and showing face, some Bollywood celebrities, yeah. a bit of a question mark on, <laughs> on the angle there. Um, but yeah, an inclusive space for more dialogue, I think uh, is, is kind of the objective here. Yeah. Now, Sunny, let's talk about VentureSuk. We're obviously very excited to hear about that and everything you've done with it. Who are you investing in? What are, what are the goals at hand? I want to hear about the climate tech as well that's uh, making its way out. Yeah, so we've been around for 11 years, which is a long time. Um, we invest in early stage ventures uh, from around the world. Uh, we used to be generalists in nature. Uh, more recently in 2019, we decided to pivot to a thematic uh, venture capital model. So we focus on two main themes. Half the team focuses on fintech, uh, predominantly in MENA, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sub-Saharan Africa. And then my team focuses on climate, uh, with a focus on the global south. Mm -hmm. So Southeast Asia through South Asia into MENA down to Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, okay, what does that entail? What are some of the, give so us some it, examples of who you're investing in. So actually there's a great company here now called Dendra that we invested into back in 2018. Uh, they set up an office here in the UAE last year. Um, you probably saw a lot of announcements around um, the planting of mangroves per attendee at COP, that's them. Uh -huh. um, and so they're using basically their drones and their AI platform to do all the mangrove restoration work on the coastline of the UAE mm -hmm. um, and expanding beyond beyond this market as well. I did hear about that. And a female <laughs> founder. Yeah, okay. Yes. But uh, what are some of the challenges that you see are happening here in the, cl uh, in the climate uh, change, for example? And what are you guys doing as a company to tackle these issues? I think there was a lot of talk about the climate stack. So obviously yeah. climate is very broad. You know, it can encompass, you know, food, food tech, ag tech, supply chain, carbon markets, which a lot of people have been talking about, climate fintech. Um, but, and there's been a lot of announcements during COP around the climate tech platforms, like COP28 has its Innovate for Climate platform, uh, Pepsi has its climate platform, Hub71 has its, has its climate platform. So everyone wants to attract all these early stage founders to uh, the UAE, which is great. But in order to build a truly healthy ecosystem, you need both sides of the equation. So we're catering to the entrepreneurs, where's the capital coming from? Mm -hmm. And so that's where players like us kind of come in, because that's what we invest into, is how do you nurture the next generation of climate founders coming both from this region, and then how do you also invest in climate founders from other regions and actually bring them uh, to regions such as this one in the global south that is feeling the repercussions of climate change the most. It's interesting sort of chatting to a number of companies, especially in this space, so companies that have been well established here, and you ask them about climate investments, changing their policies, etc. And, the, and, and, and there is a sort of, there's a reluctance amongst many at the moment because the overending sort of opinion I seem to get is that they think it's going to cost them money rather than looking at it as an opportunity to monetize. Is that something that we need to address? Is that something that you find needs more addressing? For the founders, you mean? Just founders, companies in general, from startup all the way to multinationals. Yeah. You sort of say, oh, yeah, it's a box that I need to tick yes, without sure. realizing that this is something that you can actually make work for you. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah they're being incentivized, aren't they, in certain ways? With with the founders? Initiatives? Yes. Yeah, with, the, with the various eco, climate yeah. tech platforms, yes. They're, they're, they're coming in and being incentivized to actually set up here in the region, right? But like from our perspective, we actually see this as the biggest economic opportunity yeah. for the decades to come. Climate change, I mean, and climate sector specifically, is not kind of a, you know, a FOMO sector that everyone's kind of going after. I mean, climate change is not going away. Like we're feeling it right now with all the apocalyptic rain that's been happening, for example. That's only one example. But we do believe that there's actually financial returns to be made. I do think that in this region, there's a misconception, a misconception about what climate tech actually entails yeah. and where the financial returns lie. And so that's actually why we launched a fellowship program with New York University Abu Dhabi uh, a few years ago. Um, again, how do you nurture the next generation of capital allocators who will invest? I think entrepreneurs forget that we as funds have to fundraise as well mm -hmm. um, from other investors, right? And so it, for me, it starts with that, with the LPs, the limited partners, that's the name of our investors, right? Once they start wanting to invest in things like climate, um, then it'll trickle down, the money will trickle down to people like us and then ultimately get to the founders themselves. Mm. None of this works without the founders, right? So we're all here in service to the founders. People tend to forget that as well. Mm. And what advice would you have for the entrepreneurs that would are into the climate space? So we've worked with a lot of... Looking for investments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, we've been working a lot with international companies like Dendra, for example, that I mentioned. Like they were based in the UK, actually in Australia, and then yeah. set up in Abu Dhabi to service the region. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these early stage founders have never been to the region before. And so really kind of acting as a conduit to encourage them. And that's why events, again, back to WGS or COP, et cetera, is great. We had tons of our founders come to COP um, and, and we're on stage talking about what they were working on, which again is important to back to the earlier point of people seeing real case studies. Like what is early stage climate tech? What are these companies like practically doing, right? And so we're actually, you should all come actually, we're doing a mangrove restoration site visit okay, <laughs> in Abu Dhabi. Nice. You should cool. all come in yeah. and see their work in, 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 in person. 
Um, so yeah, so I think that that's kind of uh, the gist of it. But we still have a lot to talk about. But coming up, we discuss mega urban project in the region with the CEO of URB. Plus, we meet the director of urban planning of Dubai Development Authority. Stay with us. <laughs>